Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast in relation to anatomy and this particular screencast is looking at the lactic acid system as part of the A-level PE syllabus. Just to remind anybody, if you haven't completed the ATP resynthesis cycle screencast, it's probably best to start there before you start this particular screencast. It wouldn't matter too much if you haven't seen the ATP PC system screencast, but that will probably also help before you watch this particular one. So for those that have watched that or those screencasts, just to remind you, the ATP resynthesis cycle begins with ADP in terms of the compound, so adenosine and two phosphates. And remember, when we want to create the ATP compound, we need to gain a phosphate to create ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And then when we need to release energy for the muscle groups, we use an exothermic reaction and we smash that last bond of the phosphate in adenosine triphosphate using ATPase and this creates energy for the body. If we're adding the phosphate back to ADP, this is an endothermic reaction and as mentioned last time in the ATP PC system screencast, we gain these phosphates from the energy systems. Today's screencast is looking at the lactic acid system. In exams, you may see this worded as the glycolytic system. So the two terms are interchangeable. The reason I prefer the lactic acid system is simply because it helps explain what it creates. And that can be quite useful for when you're remembering this system. Just like the ATP PC system, this is a critical statement here. This energy system, the lactic acid system, only provides energy for the resynthesis process. It does not provide energy for the body, the lactic acid system. It provides phosphates for the resynthesis process to create ATP. The lactic acid system is the same as the ATP PC system in that it works without oxygen. So it's an anaerobic system. It is also the same as the ATP PC system in that it takes place in the sarcoplasm of the muscle cells. And if you remember from the last screencast, imagine a, a piece of cling film wrapped around a muscle fibre, that is the sarcoplasm of the muscle cells. However, this is where it differs from the ATP PC system. It uses what we call glycogen, stores fuel. And we gain glycogen through food intake, particularly carbohydrates. And so the body will store those carbohydrates as glycogen, and then we can use that glycogen that's stored in the muscle through to create phosphates for ATP resynthesis. All right, so this part of the screencast will be exactly like the ATP PC system screencast. So you'll need to start drawing some diagrams to help understand what's going on. So let's say I'm sitting at my desk and I've decided to get up and sprint. So we're talking about an explosive intensive activity. The body might have run out of energy. So at this point, we might have ADP still present. The first thing the body will try to do is utilize any PC stores that are left in the muscle if we're sprinting. So it's straight away going to stimulate creatine kinase to try and break down the PC stores. Now, let's say we've been sprinting for over 10 seconds and we don't have any PC stores left, but we're still sprinting. What happens? How do we then create phosphates to keep us creating ATP so we can remain sprinting? Well, what the body will then do is it changes energy systems. So it changes from the ATP PC system and it immediately starts to activate the lactic acid system if we are still sprinting after 8 to 10 seconds. So if we're still doing anaerobic activity after 8 to 10 seconds, it's going to immediately use the lactic acid system. So this next slide is about only the lactic acid system. So when we are 
sprinting for over 10 seconds and we have high levels of adenosine diphosphate in the body, this will stimulate a different enzyme called GP. The GP enzyme will start to break the food storage in our muscle groups called glycogen. And GP will break glycogen into a different format the body can use called glucose. So GP breaks glycogen into glucose because GP is an enzyme. Once we have the substance glucose, another enzyme, PFK, breaks the glucose into a different substance called pyruvic acid. And it doesn't break all of the glucose into pyruvic acid. It, it does what we call, it partially breaks glucose into pyruvic acid. So that's a good statement to use. So PFK partially breaks glucose into pyruvic acid. When it does that, it creates a phosphate for the ATP resynthesis cycle. However, and it's not on screen, so can you add this in? It doesn't just create one phosphate, it creates two by breaking the glucose into pyruvic acid. So when you draw this on, when you put your P on your drawing diagram, can you please put times two by that phosphate? Because it's not on my screen for some reason, so apologies about that. So we've gained two phosphates through this cycle. However, because we've got pyruvic acid in the body, when we've broken the glucose down into pyruvic acid, this is a harmful substance to the body if in large quantities. And the body immediately tries to break pyruvic acid down. And when there is pyruvic acid in the body, it stimulates another enzyme called LDH. And LDH breaks pyruvic acid down into a different substance called lactic acid, which you might have heard of. And it's that substance which we have too much of, if we have too much of, that can stop muscle function. But it, but it slowly builds in the body through this system. So again, my advice to you is to draw out the diagram that's on the screen. Don't forget to write it's two phosphates, not the single P that's on the screen and then try and write a written paragraph using my words as to what is happening in this system. Because the exam questions will ask you to explain the lactic acid system. It will never ask you to draw it, so you need to be able to put this into a paragraph. The key points of this system, the lactic acid system, as we've already discussed, it creates energy for the resynthesis cycle, not energy full stop. Be careful with that. The lactic acid system will be stimulated or will only operate when PC stores are low and we are still doing anaerobic activity. So if you're still sprinting or still jumping or still throwing and we've got no PC stores left, this system starts to operate to create the phosphates. As we mentioned in the cycle, it can provide up to two ATP resynthesis cycles each time it's used. So it creates two phosphates per cycle and that helps to create two ATP compounds whenever we use it. The lactic acid system can provide energy for 30 to 90 seconds of high intensity, short duration anaerobic activity. In theory, if we reduce the speed of our running or our throwing or our jumping, it can potentially last for a maximum of around about two minutes. But that is going at extreme levels. For the exam answer, we're looking at 30 to 90 seconds of high intensity activity. And it must be anaerobic. The problem and the major disadvantage of this system though, is that we have a byproduct of lactic acid and that leads to muscular soreness or muscular fatigue. Okay, as per usual, make sure you go back over the screencast and understand what's going on. Thanks for listening. And if you need any more help with A-Level PE, please head to the iSpeak PE channel at YouTube.